Welcome to our lecture online. Before we learn how to calculate the Fourier series, I wanted to give you a visual representation of why we actually need Fourier series. So let's say we have a linear network of resistors, capacitors, inductors, and so forth, and we have some input voltage, which happens to be a periodic function, but a non-trigonometric periodic function, like a square wave function or a sawtooth function, something like that. And so we need to know what the current will be through our linear network. So if we're going to take this and turn it into a Fourier series, what we can then do is take the input voltage, the function of that, and write it as an infinite number of functions, voltage functions, like this. We'll have a DC term, a constant term, input to the circuit. We'll have V sub 1, V sub 2, V sub 3, V sub 4, all the way to V sub n, an infinite number of them. Now, of course, we wouldn't need a whole infinite number. Typically, it's sufficient if you only have a half dozen or so, five or maybe ten or something like that, sufficient to really represent the input voltage as a sum of trigonometric functions. We will then drive the circuit with that, and that will then result in the summation of currents. The current corresponding to the DC voltage input, and then I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub 3, all the way to I sub n. And then with the superposition principle, all we have to do is simply sum these currents together. So here we have an example of an input voltage in terms of a cosine function. Maybe it could be in terms of a sine function. It could be every other odd function. For example, instead of going from V sub 1 cosine of omega sub naught to omega 2 omega sub naught, 3 omega sub naught, and so forth, it may go from 1 to 3 to 5, like we saw in the previous video. But nevertheless, we'll have a sum of voltage inputs to the circuit in terms of trigonometric functions, which are the Fourier series representation of the original periodic function, which is a non-trigonometric function. And then each of them will then add in the driving of the linear network, the circuit, which then will result in, in an infinite number of currents. All we have to do then is simply add those currents together. And that's why it makes a lot of sense to use Fourier series in examples like this and we'll see quite a few examples. But that's the visual representation of why we need the Fourier series. Let's now continue with the next video, further defining what the Fourier series is.